I bring you grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want to do a couple of simple things today. Uh, first, I want to lift up sort of the theme we're going to be focusing our attention on during Lent. Uh, Ash Wednesday, again, is the beginning of this most uh, holy season of the church year of Lent. And then I want to say a word particularly about Ash Wednesday. Um, so let's start with the theme we're focusing on during Lent. Uh, and we've talked about this in other places, but it's appropriate for us to lift it up here. We're going to be drawing our attention collectively to an ancient prayer practice called the examen, E-X-A-M-E-N. Many, many uh, Christians over the centuries have used this. It became maybe most associated with a gentleman named Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuit order. Broadly speaking, it's a way for Christians to reflect back typically on the prior day or the prior 24 hours through a series of steps of prayers so that they can then lean more fully into tomorrow. Uh, I'm holding in my hand here uh, something called the Daily Examine Journal. Uh, these are available at our welcome counter. Uh, if you're interested, they are not required. I want to make that very clear. Uh, there are, but, but for the, those of you who maybe like to journal and write, this is a nice prompt for that. And uh, as I mentioned, many Christians have used this kind of prayer in the past, and there are different variations on it. We're using a, a process of the examine for this series uh, made up of five steps, and they're actually listed here in the front of this journal, which adds a sixth, actually, uh, which is simply conclude in prayer. So I'm going to lift up those five steps right now briefly for you. Uh, they, they are, first of all, one, pray for enlightenment, so invite God or the Holy Spirit into your time of prayer. Two, give thanks, and it's, this author says, review your day. Again, remember we're talking typically when we do this prayer practice about a review of the prior 24 hours. So review your day in a spirit of gratitude for the many gifts God has given you. Third movement, Examine your thoughts, words, and actions. So review your day more systematically, hour by hour, focusing on your thoughts, words, and actions in relation to yourself, others, and God. That's the third move. Fourth, respond to God in prayer. In, in, and in this move, you offer to God those key moments with a prayer of either gratitude or, importantly, contrition. So you're looking back for the past 24 hours thinking, where did I sense God's presence in a way that makes me want to say, Thank you, Jesus. And also, where did I sense that I maybe fell short in some way over the last 24 hours, and I need to ask for forgiveness? And then the fifth move is make resolutions for tomorrow. Um, and this author, again, says, using insights from the previous movements as a springboard, resolve to live more fully in Christ tomorrow. In my estimation, this whole prayer practice is, as many prayer practices are, an opportunity to try to more closely pay attention to God's presence, which is already all around us. And indeed, the uh, opening of this little essay at the start of this journal, the author titles it, The Importance of Paying Attention. And I'm going to lift up just one short couple of sentences that he writes, he says, the ultimate purpose of this prayerful, spirit-guided examination is to become more and more sensitive to God's presence and promptings within us, not only while we are praying the examine, but all the time. And as we get better at recognizing God's presence throughout our days, it becomes easier to more lovingly respond to his many gifts in our thoughts, words, and actions. So, I'm sort of framing this up right now on Ash Wednesday as our main theme. For the next five Wednesdays during Lent, we'll gather for worship, our Holden Evening Prayer at 7 o'clock. Uh, prior to that, from 6 to 6.30, there'll be an opportunity for conversation with your fellow congregants led by a pastor. Uh, and then during those services, each of us pastors will say a few words uh, about whichever move we're talking about that particular week. I celebrate that. I think it's important that we lift up prayer practices, and maybe we don't do it enough, honestly, in our tradition. However, the important point I want to make as we begin this Lenten season focusing on the examine is that I could stand up here and talk about it a whole lot. Uh, we will talk about it over the next five weeks, Wednesdays in March, 
But the, the critical thing is an invitation to each of you to actually practice this. And I'm saying that, again, I hope in an invitational, winsome, not burdensome way. I'm not trying to lay a guilt trip on you. But saying or talking about a prayer practice or hearing about a prayer practice is one thing. Actually doing it is quite another. So again, my gentle invitation to you is to invest some time, some energy, every day if you'd like, or maybe a couple of times a week, um, to, to work through this. It takes 10 or 15 minutes. And if you need a prompt, by the way, I do want to let you know that in addition to this journal, uh, we will send out a daily email uh, using our email system here. Very simple, it'll have a reading. The reading actually comes from this journal and it'll walk you through again those five steps. This is really important. Many of you likely received those emails from us. Uh, many of you probably got the emails about the weather situation today. Um, here's what you need to know. If you are signed up for the generic emails, you will not get the daily email unless you ask us to send it to you so that we're not annoying you with daily emails, okay? So you can either send us an, an email at info at spdlc.org and we'll sign you up for it, or you can go to our website, go to our e-news section, and you'll see a little box for uh, Lent 2023. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you want that, I don't want people to get halfway through Lent and say, well, where were all the emails? Okay, you need to subscribe to that, okay? Now, that, that, so that's the theme, the examine, and I hope you will enter into that sort of joyfully and intentionally at whatever level you can. Now, I want to say again, now the second thing, a word about Ash Wednesday. Uh, I'm happy to be corrected about this. My instinct is that the culture around us, and I talk a lot about sort of how the culture perceives us as Christians uh, versus, I think, who we really are. I think the culture around us probably looks at Christians on Ash Wednesday and has something like this in mind. They think, why are you Christians so negative? Why are you so morbid? Why do you go to church to have an ashen cross put on your forehead that says, with the words, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return? It's so depressing, right? Which doesn't surprise me, that cultural response, because why? Our culture, in my estimation, I'm happy to be corrected about this, in my estimation, our culture is very reluctant to enter into pain or grief or sadness or difficulty or challenge or, yes, death. Turns out, though, those are all an integral part of life. Can I get an amen to that? Which means, when the culture looks at us and says, why are you being so negative? Be more positive, be more upbeat. My response to them is, it's not a question of being optimistic or positive or negative, it's a question of being what? Honest. And I would say that the culture, when it refuses to enter into pain or grief or sadness or difficulty or challenge or death, is being dishonest or it's being a state of denial. And honestly, I don't think it helps us much. So I wanna suggest we come here on Ash Wednesday, as we come on other days of the year as well, but this is a particular time, obviously, to be reminded of who we are, to be honest about who we are. And part of that, yes, means that we are dust and we will return to dust. And minimally, I think there are a couple of ways that that's helpful and meaningful. The first I've already mentioned, and that is that it allows us to be honest about ourselves, right? I, I love the quip, I, I've said it before, I think I'll repeat it here, that the church is, is a hospital for sinners. It is not a hotel for saints. This is not where we come, friends, and you all in your own lives can think of places where you do go to act like everything's okay, to put on your, you know, your bright, shiny smile and pretend like everything's great. No, this is the place where we come in all of our brokenness, 
in all of our fretfulness, in all of our fear, in all of our worry, in all of our grief, in all of our concern about our own death. And we acknowledge that openly and honestly so that we can be in right relationship with God and ourselves and one another, okay? So the first point is it's, it, it allows us to be honest. And the second, this sort of uh, willingness on Ash Wednesday particularly to focus on our mortality also reminds us that there will come an end to this early, earthly life. And it creates a sense of urgency. It reminds us, folks, we've only got so much time, in the words of Micah, which we talked about a few weeks ago, to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with God. So it's a reminder that God is saying, folks, get after it. You don't have forever, right? For both of those reasons, and probably many others, Christians over the centuries have uh, again and again said it's a good thing, not a negative thing, not a morbid thing, not a depressing thing. It's a good thing for us to focus on our own mortality. And uh, one of my favorite authors, I'm going to lift him up again because he says this stuff so well, C.S. Lewis says this, summarizing that. He says, um, most of the great Christians of the past thought it good for us to be always aware of our mortality. This is still C.S. Lewis saying this. I am inclined to think they were right. And that's good enough for me. I'm inclined to think they were right as well. And I do think um, it's good for us to be reminded of our mortality for all the reasons I've mentioned. And I do pray that this season will be a time for us to journey with Jesus as he makes his way to the cross. And part of, of being honest about who we are and part about being honest about our mortality here in this place also is related to the fact that our mortality is what? Not the end of the story. Our death is not the end of the story. And we'll have more to say about that, of course, when we make it to the end of Lent. But in the meantime, I pray that our practice of testing out the examine individually and together will allow us to enter in more fully to our relationship with God and each other. And I'm going to invite us now to join in a word of prayer. Good and loving God, as we gather today on this Ash Wednesday to begin this Lenten journey, I pray that you will accompany us, that you will remind us daily of your presence, that you will help us to see how we can look more actively for your presence in our lives and listen more attentively to your presence in our lives so that with each day we grow closer to you. Bless us on our Lenten journey and all this we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen.